Oh, that. What a weekend for Oregon State. I mean, Oregon. Oregon Ducks. They barely pull off the win against San Jose State, 35-22. to And to talk to, uh, to us about Oregon Ducks and college football and sports is Mr. Ty Turner. Welcome to the Sportscast. So, Deb. so uh, what happened to Oregon? I mean, Herbert did not have his best game, but I don't, I, dude. I don't. You know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. A couple things. I don't necessarily agree with what you just said. You said they barely put out the pulled out a victory. Thirty-five twenty-two. I That's mean, pretty close. No, it's not that close. For one, <laughs> just stop reading stat sheets. Um, San Diego, and you got to go like read, like got to go either watch the game, or you got to go like I, I no, this is I, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do a little venting here. I'm gonna do a little venting, and and, and, and I'm not just coming after you. I'm not just coming after, but I'm coming after the whole social media people pushing out information, and half the time you can tell people did not watch the game that they're talking about, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I'm not going to give you what I thought Alabama looked like against Ole Miss because you know what? I didn't see the game. It, the stat sheet looks like they destroyed Ole Miss, so, so they probably did. But you know what I'm saying? I've just seen a lot of bad takes, uh, especially this year, because obviously I'm a, hu- I'm a huge Oregon Duck fan. I saw some highlights. Watched, it doesn't count. <laughs> um, I'm a huge Oregon fan, and I've seen all their games. But I've seen, heard some – on YouTube and on podcasts, people be like, oh, but Justin Herbert was only 10 for 21 the opening week. He, yeah, he had five drop passes. I'm not talking about a, like drop, like, you know, it would have been a good catch by the receiver. You, you know, it's kind of a 50 50 ball. I'm talking about the guy running scot free, no one near him, hit them like literally right between the numbers and dropped it. I'm that kind of drop. So to go back to the thing. Did Oregon play good on Saturday? No, they didn't. They're flatter than a board. They were clearly looking ahead, but they barely won. And it, it, no, they're ahead. Thir- they're ahead twenty-eight to six in the third quarter. W- going into the fourth quarter, it was thirty-five to twelve. Um, and it was never. It was never like they were never in jeopardy of losing that game. It just was one of those games that they just never really put away like they should have because they just didn't play that well. But Herbert they didn't barely had, play that game. That's, had, just not, that's just a false narrative. Herbert had a 300-yard passing game. He had three touchdowns and two interceptions. Yeah, this is what I'll say about Herbert's performance. Came out, made some nice throws. Once again, they got dropped. And then and he, he had a couple touchdowns, looked pretty good. But then you could tell, and this would be my one knock against Justin Herbert, and this is the one thing that I, he needs to improve on and I want to see it from him moving forward. You can tell when there's drop passes or you can tell sometimes when things aren't going right, it gets to him mentally a little bit. He's known to be a perfectionist. He's a 4.1 biology student, for goodness sakes. But that perfectionist kind of, Outlook, I think all of a sudden it started getting to him and he started pressing. Like his first interception, he, he threw into double coverage. He didn't need to make the throw. Um, his was kind of the same thing. He started just kind of making throws that he really didn't need to make. He just, just hold on to the ball or just throw it away. And that was a couple of interceptions. He also had a couple, um, like passes where he was just a little bit off and it, just felt like the team was flat. He, you know, performance against San Jose was definitely the, the worst he's looked this year. Um, but I kind of can understand why, because plain and simple, his guys, he, 11 drop balls in three weeks is just way too much. You I think- mean, it's ridiculous. His receiving core has been so bad. They've been p- pitiful, actually. What do you think about San Jose State? Do you think they're capable of performing at a high level? No, no. I mean, they're, they are what they are. They got people back. Um, no. I mean, if Oregon played San Jose 10 times, that would have been the closest it ever would have been. I mean, Oregon was better than, than them in every way. I mean, we were better offensively, defensively. Um, it's just they came to play. 
Oregon was clearly looking ahead. We made some mistakes, threw a couple interceptions, um, had a couple timely penalties. We had a kickoff return that got called back because of a touchdown. We had an interception call back because of a late hit. Um, we turned the ball over at the, at the two yard line going in for a touchdown. So we made some timely mistakes and they played hard, but the closest that game would ever be is 13 points. I'd say you'd normally Oregon would win that game by about 30. Looking forward to the next game is Stanford. Um, they say the two best players in the Pac-12 is, uh, is Justin Herbert and the season. Um, you know, um, you know, for one, it's a tough question to answer because Oregon has played three very, very you know subpar, easy, non-power five or FCS schools. So it's tough to really know what will be the hardest. I would actually say that Stanford is the team that I say is the best team, the overall team they're going to play. Do I think it's the hardest game? No, I actually find games like Cal next week, late, on the road. That will be a hard game. Do I think Cal's as good as Stanford? No, I don't. But I just think on the road late, that's a tricky game. I think Washington State on the road is a tricky game. I think a game like Utah, because like I think Stanford and Washington are the two best teams in the Pac-12, but I think that they're at Austin. Their college game days there the next next week, and then <clears throat> at Austin, uh, Austin, sorry, sorry. Um, after um, the bye week for Washington, and that's their biggest rival. So I just think they're going to be really up for these games. I think they're going to be ready for these games. I don't really, I, I don't, I actually don't see those games being as tricky as the on the road games against part of the um, the the best teams. But I don't necessarily think that those games are as hard or as tricky as some of the other less talented teams on the road. Vegas has Oregon uh, winning uh, the game this weekend, um, 1.5 points. So it's looking good for them. Um, What do you think about their quarterback, uh, K.J. Costello? He's a very, he's a good player. Um, He didn't look good last week, but you know, I think Stanford might have been looking ahead too playing in FCS school. I think he's a good player. Um, I think he, he had some good receivers. I mean, our Sega White side is a terrific receiver. Um, Trent Irwin is a three-year starter. Um, you got Colby Parkinson and Caden Smith, two future, like, probably NFL tight ends. So he has some good weapons, and that's not even counting Bryce Love. Um, he has some very good weapons on his team, and he can, he can get it done, but if we if if it's between Herbert and uh, Casella to win the game, um, the onus on one player I'd take Herbert nine times out of ten. Um, but I think that uh, actually Costello has better weapons around him. I, I would take or think a white side Irwin over any receiver on Oregon's w- roster easily. And how about Bryce Love? Do I think he's good? He, yeah. yeah, he's terrific. He, he almost won the yeah he almost won the Heisman last year. Um, the only thing is he's, he, he is coming off of an injury. I don't know where he's at, um, but uh, yeah, he's a great player, and they have a great offensive line. They have some very good offensive linemen. So they have a guy this year that's kind of probably be a first or second round pick. I forgot his name. But then Walker Little, the sophomore tackle, he's a for sure, almost a surefire first round pick in 2020. So they're, if he comes out, Stanford guys a lot of times graduate. But uh, yeah, they're, 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 they have some talent. Offensively, they have several guys who are going to be playing in the NFL. Here is the AP poll, the top 10. Number one is Alabama, two Georgia, three Clemson, four Ohio State, five Oklahoma, six LSU. Stanford 7th, 8th Notre Dame, 9 Auburn, 10th Washington. What do you find this uh, – how do you see this poll? Yeah, I think it's pretty much the same as last week. Um, I think you had Auburn lose. You had LSU jump up. Um, you had 
Um, Wisconsin lose. I, I told you Wisconsin. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't love that Wisconsin team, so I wasn't shocked that they lost. Um, I, I, you know, yeah, I, I think it's pretty good right now. It's definitely super, um, super top heavy. I mean, I think the top, best four teams are definitely the top four. So, I think after that, it's, it's kind of kind of tricky. We'll see where, where everyone's at. We have a lot of big games looming for all those top ten teams. But uh, if someone was going to crash that party, maybe LSU. They have a tough schedule. I was going to say. Um, you think LSU Oklahoma, had the biggest win this weekend? Yeah, they did. Yep, for sure on the road. Um, but Oklahoma, Oklahoma is a team that you know they have a gr- that Lincoln Riley really is an offensive uh, genius, and you know with Kyler Murray and those weapons around him. Um, they did lose their big running back, Anderson, for the season. But uh, Oklahoma is a team that could get in there. Um, you know, Penn State, Ohio State plays at Penn State. Um, Penn State's top ten team. You got Trace McSorley. You also have Nick Bosa, who's out for a while with an injury. But that's a, that, that's, that could be a tricky game. Uh, some teams that could maybe crash the party. And then you got the Pac-12. Can the Pac-12 somehow eke its way into the discussion? I'm kind of thinking they would have to probably finish maybe undefeated. But maybe one loss, you could see Washington or Stanford sneak in. I think that Oregon would pretty much have to finish undefeated in order to sneak into the college football playoff. Yeah, it's um, it, it's a quite... Um, it's a quite interesting uh, top 10 where we, uh, we see right here. LSU has a tough schedule. You're absolutely right. They play Mississippi State. They play uh, they play Alabama. Uh, we got a and I think they also play. So it's going to be – we'll see. If LSU could beat all of them, they should be number one. Yeah, yeah. They can, yeah, if they can beat Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi State, they, should, they definitely should be. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I – I mean, they barely beat Auburn. Auburn's pretty good, but Auburn I don't think is as good as Georgia. I don't think Auburn's as good as uh, – definitely not as good as Alabama. And I don't think Auburn's is uh, – I don't even know if they're as good as Mississippi State. So, Minnesota Timberwolves, your boy Butler might want to go to the Clippers. Go, bro. <laughs> go, go, bro. <laughs> I don't like him. You want to keep that guy Towns. I've, he has I've more leverage. Never liked him. Yeah, Towns, and you got uh, Wiggins, and you got um, well, Jamal Crawford. Probably not keeping him. Taj Gibson, Gibson was good last year, though. Um, you also have uh, the point guard Teague. I mean, but they they gave up they gave up Rubio and. But I don't. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Jimmy Butler. He's kind of mouthing off a lot this year. I don't think Minnesota fan base. I know a lot of people didn't particularly care for him that much. But what he's really jerky to Ricky Rubio. Rubio was really liked around Minnesota. Um. So, uh, just I just don't. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan. So he can go. Go go to your little knickers. <laughs> Well, Butler is definitely going to request a trade, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, what do you think about the tie this past weekend against uh, the, the Packers and the Vikings? Good game. It was a very good game. Rodgers ended up playing. I didn't think he was going to play. He played well. He was not there in Rodgers that he normally is, but he played well. Um, you know, Kirk Cousins played well. Kirk Cousins made a lot of timely plays. Um, their kicker Kicked terrible for, for the Vikings. Um, Mike McCarthy sucked again by terrible time management at the end. I did not agree with the call by Clay Matthews. Um, I think both teams could have won the game. The Packers had it, and then between time management and the bad call by Matthews, got the Vikings a chance, but then the Vikings missed a gimme field goal <laughs> to win it. So, you know, they, they both had their chances. I think they're about pretty close. I think that kind of explains the Vikings and the Packers. I think they're about that. They're pretty even. I think the Vikings are better off. Uh, Vikings are better defensively, and the Packers are just better offensively because of of Rodgers. I wouldn't necessarily say there's some things I like better even about the Vikings offense. I would take Dalvin Cook over any running back for the Packers. Um, 
I would take out Adam Thielen and, and Stephon, Di- Stephon Diggs maybe over. Well, I like Devontae Adams a lot. You saw that catch with but, Thielen? Yeah, Thielen's very good. I mean, Thielen and, and Diggs are very two, one, two, very good. And Cook's a very good running back. So, but I, you know, I take Rodgers over Cousins, but Cousins isn't bad. So, and then they have a good defense. But you know, the Packers don't have bad defense. Packers are definitely much better in the secondary. Those young guys are pretty good. Um, I mean, Joey Alexander had that interception taken away by that Clay, Clay Matthews late hit. Yeah, but. In gets off some good pressure, so I don't know. Pretty cl- pretty close teams, pretty close game. Obviously, and then tie. Yeah, I'm interested to see how the NFC North. I could see both of them making playoffs this year. With Daniel Carson missing that late uh, field goal kick, it reminded me of Blair Walsh. Remember him? Yeah. Yep. For sure. <laughs> the Vikings have have had not so well kickers in the past couple of years, but. Uh, Hopefully they can get that resolved soon. So we get hope and pray, right? <laughs> it's too, and uh, what you thought about Josh Gordon going to the Patriots? Big time pickup by the Patriots. I mean, big time. Uh, he's he's in a lot of trouble, but the thing is, is he's a he's a talent. So and Bill Belichick knows if he causes any trouble, then he'll be out of there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I think I think he's a uh, like the Patriots are wide receiver desperate right now, so they definitely got a good deal. Yeah, um, they losing Amendola and I guess uh, Edelman is out for suspension reasons, and then Chris Hogan can only do so much. So we'll see what happens. Um, hey, that's the Patriots. They turn it around. They're serious about their work, and we'll see what happens this weekend when they yep. face Detroit. So, um, ready for some Correct. predictions. Yeah, let's go. Texas A and M versus Alabama. I definitely uh, it's at Alabama. I mean, Texas A and M does look a lot better, but wow. I think Alabama is just too much. Their offense is a juggernaut right now. So Alabama, Stanford versus Oregon. You know, I I can't do it. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say that I thought Stanford would win this, even though I'm an Oregon fan. But I have to pick Oregon. They're, they're who, they're who, I have to pick my team. Justin Herbert somehow is going to do it. I don't love this game because of the three cupcakes and just because we don't necessarily totally know what we got for a team. I think we have seven. But not the back end, I'm worried about. They have big plays against not good competition. Um, we know what we got from Justin Herbert. I, we have a pretty good offensive line, but I really question the skill positions because they did not play very well against subpar competition. And we're going up against a top 10 team. We're going up against a Pac-12 North rival. So there, there's, there's, there's a hesitancy. There's a little bit of like, it, are they there? Are we there? And it worries me. But it's at Altson. It's at one of the loudest stadiums in college football, probably the loudest stadium for sure in the Pac-12. It's going to be amped. College game day is going to be there. I'm counting on all of that, and I just think that Stanford, they start a little slow. I think Oregon, with the energy, with the motion of the home, I think they can get out to a like a 21-7 lead in the second quarter. And then I think you'll kind of get close, but I think, I, I think we can hold them off. And I think... Herbert's going to make enough big plays, not only in the passing game, but I think when things get tight, I think, I think he's going to take some chances running the ball too. And, and what is often overlooked is Justin Herbert is a tremendous athlete. I mean, the guy can really run him. He's a Ryan Tannehill. He's that <laughs> guy that's going to run a 4-6 or whatever at the combine. You know, you're laughing. You think it's funny. but um, <laughs> I wish you were down but, here in Miami but, uh, because we don't believe in Tannehill as much as you do. I don't believe in Tannehill. Okay. Who said I believe in Tannehill? <laughs> you sing his praises all the no, time. No, you said I believe in Tannehill. Why <laughs> you sing his praises? You... No, I don't. Okay. How, how do I sing his praises all the time? You say you like his style. 
No, I did not say that. Okay, never mind that. <laughs> That's just not true. These are, yeah, these are not true. I didn't say I love Ryan Tannehill. I said Justin Herbert is a Ryan Tannehill type athlete. Yeah, we'll take. I'm not necessarily like the progr- Okay, we have not. Ne- I'm not necessarily like the. Progr- you understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I don't, I'm not saying. Ryan Tannehill is crazy. That's just not a. That's an inaccurate statement. I think Ryan Tannehill is not. He's been a very up and down pro career, but Ryan Tannehill is a good athlete. I mean, Ryan Tannehill played wide receiver at Texas A&M. There's no denying he's a great athlete. I just think as a quarterback, he's been very inconsistent. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. When I compare Justin Herbert to, you know, Ryan Tannehill, or if I compare him to Mitch Trubisky, I'm not comparing them to their professional performances. Because if I'm saying, oh, I think Justin Herbert's going to be like Ryan Tannehill, do you think anyone would draft him? No, no, that's a negative but if connotation. You say that's the kind of <laughs> yeah. But if you but if you say that someone's that kind of athlete has that kind of upside, meaning like Justin Herbert is a big guy, he's a large, imposing kind of quarterback. Justin Herbert is a athletic guy. You could even say Justin Herbert, but he doesn't play like Cam Newton. The thing is, he does desire to stay. Like, Justin Herbert prefers to stay in the pocket. Whereas Cam Newton, it's always 50-50. Will he stay in the pocket or will he get out? Justin Herbert, he wants to stay in the pocket. It's just if the pocket breaks down, he will run. And Justin Herbert can run. So when I'm doing the, um, when I'm doing the connection between the comparison, sorry, it is more of him athletically and his upside potential, I hope he's better than Ryan Tannehill. I hope, I hope so his too. career progression is better than Tannehill. I hope he comes uh, to the Dolphins. Yeah, that would be see. Well, if, well, man, if they keep on winning, they're, they're going to probably take themselves out of, <laughs> out of uh, Justin Herbert's sweet sticks. Exactly. He's, he's kind of trending towards the top, top ten right now. So. Yeah. They're winning if they want him. Okay, so Tyler picks Oregon. Yeah, and uh, how about Florida versus Tennessee? Where where is the game at? It's in Tennessee. Uh, I'll yeah, I know, but they they look good in that in that uh, um, tough for them to win. Uh, they look good against uh, the Steelers in that tie. Um. I I'm gonna take the Browns. They're home. You know the Jets have a rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold. He looked good first week. Not as good last week. I'll take I'll take the I'll take the Browns. Browns win their first game since 2016. Cowboys versus Seahawks. Bears versus the Lions. Um, his Patriots had a rough performance last week, but that is playing against. Um, arguably one of the maybe the best defense in Jacksonville in the NFL. Um, the Lions lost a close one to the Niners. Uh, they've not had a great start to their season either. I think I would take the Patriots. Broncos. Need to get together. Uh, Broncos at the Ravens. Chiefs look pretty good. Well, it was actually my next game. I was going to tell you Packers at Redskins. Nice. Packers. Packers. And finally, Steelers at the Buccaneers. Fitzmagic. Dude, Fitzpatrick's been playing pretty good. Amazing. And it's on the road, and the Steelers haven't been playing that good. I'm going to say the Buccaneers. And did you like his <laughs> uh, Did you like his outfit on Sunday? No. Would you wear that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Would you wear that outfit? No. <laughs> he grabbed it from the Conor McGregor closet, they say. Jeez. <laughs> all that? He did all that Harvard education for that? <laughs> that's right. He went to Harvard. Yeah. Crap. That's that's pretty good. He didn't do well yeah, with the Jets, but yeah. like he does well turning things. Now, do you think if he keeps winning, do you think he should start over Winston? I do because Jamias Winston is is just 
been a he's been a nightmare off the field in his, since college. I mean, whether it was the rape allegations, the inappropriate behavior in the cafeteria, stealing the crab wings, and now <laughs> this incident with the Uber driver that got suspended. I mean, he's just been a off the field nightmare, and I just. When does it look like he's changing? He's been doing this since his freshman year of college, and now he's in his fourth year in the league, and he's still doing the same kind of stuff. No, I, 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 would, I would, if I were them, I'd move on to Winston. Train wow, him. make him someone else's problem. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, it's true. He has had a lot of issues. He's been inconsistent. He's, he's, yeah, he's been inconsistent on the field too. If he's, if his product on the field, uh, if obviously. At the end of the day, when if you're winning football games and you're given a good product on the football field, even if you have off the field transgressions, let's be honest, they get overlooked. He's not been that good on the field. He he's been inconsistent on the field, so it's not. Yeah, I, I would move on from him. Ty Turner, big game, big weekend in college sports. Oregon's biggest test, I think. We shall see what happens. Game day all day. Uh, didn't they switch that from Alabama and they moved it to Oregon? Uh, oh, because you saw me saying that on our chat? Yeah. Um, sorry, I got this email and I'm all of a sudden reading it. Um, <laughs> no, they, they did not. Hold on. Sorry, I got the dream email. Okay, no, no, they did not switch it from, um, um, they, they they didn't have. I was worried that Alabama would maybe get it because whenever Alabama has a top twenty five matchup, it seems like they get game day. But uh, no, they they had not made the decision. And I think they actually you know when I was hearing I was hearing that Stanford and Oregon won that they were leaning in that direction because we technically are the because I think Alabama's first. It's about the same because out one number one against number twenty two or number seven versus number twenty. But the thing is, is you're going to have a lot of uh, SEC probably opportunities coming up for college game day. I don't know how much Pac-12 opportunities you have. I would argue there might not be another game in the Pac-12 that game day comes to. So this is probably the best game. And Eugene is widely known as one of the funnest places to cover because it's just the crowd is so loud. It's a really small stadium. It only fits 55,000. But wow. it's really loud. That must be hard it's to get tickets super for. super loud. Yeah, people just sit in there like sardines, and it's just, like, super loud. <laughs> and I guess it's really – the Oregon fan base is pretty, like – really, you know, they're pretty pretty intense. So I guess it's one of – it's real Lee Corso actually says it's his favorite place to cover game day. So you got Oregon in the top 25. They haven't been there for a couple of years. Um, you have the opportunity to host it in one of the most fanatic fan bases. It was good. It, I think Oregon won it, but you know, I personally was a little worried that Bama might steal it, but they didn't. And there you have it, Tyler. How can people reach you, Tyler Turner, MPLS? There you have it. Twitter, Guys, Instagram. Yeah, Twitter, Instagram. He's all on it. He'll talk to you back. He'll reply to you back. And don't get too crazy. Anyways, watch some sports this week. A lot going on. Ty, thanks for coming on to the Sportscast. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me.